This is Jim. He's our meat manager. Hello. Happy birthday. Yeah. Thank you. That's what it sounded like a couple of Saturdays ago in the Metro grocery store in the small southern Ontario town of Picton. The staff threw a birthday bash for four-year-old Lev Goldfarb. Lev got to wear a white butcher's coat, although it was way too big for him. He and his friends got to stack bananas. They scanned grocery items at the cash. And there was pizza and cupcakes and a treasure hunt. It was a dream party for the toddler. Lev's family moved from Tel Aviv before the pandemic to be closer to his grandparents, who have roots in Ottawa. Lev's mother, Hadass Breitman, has since become the de facto leader of Jewish life in the area, which locals call the county, between Toronto and Kingston. Although the closest synagogue is about 40 minutes away in Belleville, Picton is attracting a growing number of city Jews in recent years. It didn't take much convincing for the Metro store managers to carry out Lev's wishes, even though they'd never done anything like it before. I have one thing I've learned from this as well, and it's actually from Hadass. And um, Hadass has said, don't quote me, but I'm going to be right on point, um, that, you know what, all you have to do is ask. You never know what you'll receive. Yeah, I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Tuesday, February the 7th, 2023. Welcome to the CJN Daily, a podcast of the Canadian Jewish News, sponsored by Metropia. I'm sure you've already heard about this grocery store birthday bash after Lev's mother posted photos and a write-up on her Facebook page, and it went viral. But we are the CJN Daily, of course, and we wanted to know the Jewish angle to all of this. Now, a whole lot of good may come out of it. As the families taught the staff what a mitzvah is, And there are ripple effects for this coming Passover and beyond. Joining me now to get the the behind-the-scenes story are Hadass Breitman, the mother of the birthday boy, Paul Jones, the assistant store manager, and Murray Lupinette, his boss. And they're all in the staff room at the Metro store together where we caught up with them. I see behind you, our listeners won't be able to see it, but there's a a, a famous sign that you want to tell us what that sign is from? That's from the uh, birthday party we had here. Lev's fourth birthday party. The famous Metro party. Yeah. I know this broke uh, when Hadass, of course, went public on Facebook. What has the reaction been since this went out? Have you been receiving calls from all over the world? It has actually been quite insane. Uh, myself, Paul's receiving more than anybody. My biggest one was um, I got a lady from Michigan uh, that had called and just said she couldn't believe what uh, had just transpired and that she was going to push it viral through the states yeah no it's every single day well well even just our customers at the store level um it's a negative but it's a positive really i've had a few cashiers come up to me and said you really had to throw a birthday party didn't you i can't stop hearing about this damn birthday party (laughs) because every single customer is is really just they're through the moon honestly They, they thought they think it's awesome and actually, I've had a few sales rep people call me, and they've um, they're they've been on the verge of tears. They feel almost privileged to do business with us. Now, what did head office have to say? I want to go back a little bit to maybe you can tell us like how this all happened. But how did you get permission, or did you even have to? <laughs> so yeah, we did. Paul and I reached out to first of all um, risk and insurance to make sure that. We had insurance for the kids when they were coming through the store and or parents in back rooms and places we normally wouldn't have people. Um, And then also our head of communications was very much involved. She reached out to marketing, hence the signs. And then it's just ballooned from there. Obviously now Hadass, did you have to pay anything or did the store have to pay anything, um, Murray? Was there a cost for this? No, there's not a cost when it comes to our customers. Seriously? Because, like, if you rent, like, I don't know, Chuck E. Cheese or, you know, some of the stuff. It was all absorbed at store level. Wow. So would you say, would you want to say how much it was for a party like this? You know, can I comment on that? Yes, please. I will say that it was a big surprise on our end um, because Metro really wanted to gift us this beautiful experience. So they absorbed the cost, the resources, the energy, And that was a real big gift. So they really took it upon themselves to do it. Um, So beyond the monetary implications, I think there's so much that you just can't put a price on. Um, And that was really the big the big impact. The thing that's interesting to me about it is, you know, I don't know if either of you gentlemen have kids. 
Yes? I have four kids, three grandchildren. I do not. I'm a bachelor. <laughs> but are you a cool uncle or something? Like No, no, I have no experience with kids at all. Don't never had young cousins or How did you know what kids would want? Because I'm a child at heart. Uh, well, how did you know what kids might want for a party? Who told you what to do? Uh, absolutely no nobody did. I'm gonna take the lead on this one yeah. because Paul actually amazed myself of um, not having children. He had all the right ideas. The only, only thing that I ever had to give Paul advice on was to remember you're dealing with four year olds and we have to kind of move quickly. Every idea was Paul's. The thing that's cool, like, have you ever watched Guy's Grocery Games on TV from, like, the Food Network? Do you know what that is? Yeah, I know what it is. No, I don't no. know if I've ever watched it, but I know what that is, yeah. Okay, so they race around, and there's, like, he's yelling at them and everything. Like, did you have to clear the store for this to happen? No. Not at all. Um, the kid, I think at that point, that was the only time throughout the entire experience where I was like, ooh, this could maybe go south because they did run up and down the aisles a little bit. Men's Originals, Old El Paso, and some Charmin. Can anybody find them? Uh, but no, I. everyone was very well behaved and nobody got hurt and no. Um, Ellen, can we go back to a sec- the fact that Paul is single because maybe this is a great way to put it out there <laughs> that, that this is the Canadian Jewish news, right, yeah. Ellen? So uh, may, maybe Paul is interested, and so this would be a good plug to say that oh. uh, he's at the Metro Picton branch, yeah. um, and you could just ask him by his name. You're welcome. Yeah, it also Wait, needs man. to be noted he uh, he works very long hours, yeah. so... <laughs> I got two cats. But you get a friends and family discount. Speaking of Jewishness, it's the Canadian Jewish news. So I have to ask, okay, in the store, like how do Jewish people in Prince Edward County get kosher food if they want some, like for Passover or for, you know, whatever, matzah or whatever coming up in Picton? Is your store ever able to supply stuff like that? So uh, via this, yes. I was just, we had asked and Paul and I were speaking about this. Uh, come, come at Passover, um, I lean on a fellow store. They order it in for me. I go get it and bring it in. But we're actually now going to, because of this and because of Hadassah's uh, contacts in the Jewish community and how big it's getting here in Prince Edward County, that uh, we're actually now just working on going to bring in more Jewish products and keep them here year round. Yeah. <laughs> that is a win. So the birthday party becomes like a marketing thing for, you know, uh, Manushevitz. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Snowballed a lot. And, you know, and it's, it's kind of fitting because this is such a beautiful story about inclusivity and community, community spirit. So it has had ripples beyond our expectations. And the fact that it could continue on really exemplifies the role that grocery stores like Metro play in the community. How how did you handle little kids stacking the shelves, especially the bananas? I love that picture, but, I mean, that's something you have to watch out for, right? Mr. Jones, he did it all. Talk about how you how you corralled a bunch of four, three, well, four-year-olds to be able to safely do that. They all just listened. Honestly, it, it was not difficult. They're all so well-behaved, and that's, you know, a testament to their parents, honestly. Um, all I had to do was speak at a certain volume that, you know, this is what's happening. And they got behind me. They rallied behind me. They bought in. Um, Yeah, it wasn't difficult at all. What was your profession before you were in the grocery business? Um, Prior to this, I did work at a radio station. I was a part of their promotions team, um, as well as I was going to school for marketing, actually. Not yet. So not child care. Or no. correctional services. <laughs> <laughs> no. My sister is actually an ECE, but not, not myself, no. Well, there you go. It rubbed off, obviously. But you have the voice, the commanding voice. They listen to you, right, obviously. Yeah, I guess so. What was your most fun of the whole thing, Paul? What was the most fun for you personally? I can answer that for him. Go for it. He was having a riot organizing it. Every day was a new question. Every day was a new uh, add-on, or can we, or we, we will. Um, f- I can answer that for him. He, that was his fun, is getting it all organized. Yeah, um, I mean, he's, he's bang on. That, that, I wouldn't have even thought about that, because I'm just focused on, on remembering the party. But There's also a really great picture of Paul um, teaching the kids how to use the frosting. 
on the, mm. in the cupcake station. So um, I would say you also had a really good time there. Yeah. You're, you're very focused, yeah. very yeah, focused, yeah. very into it. Well, because I, again, bachelor, I don't do a lot of baking um, or cooking for that matter. Big Mac and cheese guy. Uh, <laughs> So when it came to, to baking, I learned a few things. Like, I don't remember the last time I ever decorated a cupcake, if I've ever kind of learned a new skill. And then the whole um, how to actually get sprinkles on it without getting it all over the place. You dip, you actually dip the cupcake that's been iced, and it's mess-free. So Who knew? I literally did not know that. What a great, what a concept. Well, enjoy your Mac, <laughs> enjoy your Big Mac and cheese now, because if you find a nice Jewish girl, oh, yeah. you'll be having the Big Mac without the cheese. Yeah. He works in a grocery store. He can bring home stuff every day. That's, That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I want to ask one last thing about, and this is for you, Hadas. Did you explain to him what the word mitzvah means? Uh, no. <laughs> All right. So Paul and Marie... What I think you did, and I'm going to ask Hadas if she agrees, in the Jewish tradition, when you do a good deed for someone, it's called you did a mitzvah. I don't know if in the, in the Ten Commandments, one of them is thou shalt make a birthday party in the grocery store. <laughs> it should it's be. It's not. <laughs> it's pretty close. It'll be rewritten. For Lev, that's probably the biggest birthday you know, mitzvah that's going to ever happen to him. So <laughs> what do you think about that in terms of the... It's a Jewish podcast, so we're asking. Hadass, thoughts on this mitzvah? Yeah, I think that... Um... You know, there's so much here beyond the actual party that is that is a mitzvah when we're talking about, you know, good deeds and, and ripples in our community. Because my daughter, that same night, she turned to me and said, she's eight, she said, I can't believe that happened. And I said, I know, what, like, what, what do you think? She's like, it was just so cool how we did it and this and that. And ever since then, she's been ideating and thinking of, you know, things that we could do in our community. And so that kind of invisible barrier of what we could do, what's possible has been lifted. And that is huge to introduce to an eight-year-old. Just imagine if we all had that experience at eight, right? What, what that could have done for us. So I think that is the real incredible thing. And as you know, this has had huge reach, and the story at some point, I think, maybe even stopped being about the Lev's Metro party and became about what could happen, you know, when you ask what could happen when a community business decides to make dreams come true, when people work together, when good spirit is involved. And now the story is very much about a good, good news, um, which we all really needed. So was it a mitzvah? A hundred percent. But the impacts of it on my family alone um, are going to be, I think, you know, showing for a very long time. None of us expected this type of, of, uh, of reach. Um, for us in this community, it's more um, not so much about our office. It's what we're receiving back from the community. It's tenfold. Just the comments. We just... Five minutes before we walked in this room, we had a gentleman. Yeah, he wanted us to get a liquor license so he could have, <laughs> have his 60, 60th. <laughs> I, I'm just waiting for Lev's next big idea. <laughs> he could have his bar mitzvah party in 10 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and Paul's going to have his wedding room. here, right? <laughs> but it's true. And look, we just, just, you know, I've been living in this community for three and a half years. I always knew there was an issue with getting kosher and Jewish food. I just assumed, Ellen that it wasn't something that was going to happen, you know. But here, even just 30 minutes ago, I brought it up to Paul and Murray. Now we're already thinking about, you know, about doing this. So I think there's a huge th lesson there to dare to dare to ask. If you want to hear more about Jewish life in Prince Edward County, we put a link in our show notes to Yechupitzville's interview with Hadass Breitman from last year. And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality, and customer care. Today's listener shout-out goes to Mara Schnee. She wrote in to tell me that she attended that vegan Shabbat dinner at Vancouver's Sharad Sedek Synagogue that we mentioned in Monday's show about Tu Bishvat. And folks, this is why I love doing this CJN Daily, because I get to hear from long-lost people from my past. Both Mara's and my family went to the same synagogue in Montreal, Bethel. Stay tuned as later this week I'll take you on an exclusive tour of the new Leonard Cohn exhibit at the Art Gallery of Ontario. 
with his selfies and his drawings and even an original draft of Hallelujah with his scribbled notes on it. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again. Thank you.